Hello, well, welcome to the beginning of June garden tour here. This is the view from the street of the uh, North Kitchen Garden here. So what you'll see throughout the garden today is I've got red cups and other kinds of planter around the beds because I like to place them all out in the garden first and then um, edit, decide if I like where the locations are, and then we plant them in once we're ready. So as I take you along this bed here, what you're gonna see is the foxgloves are out. You're gonna see the fever few. Um, you're gonna see the peonies, which have flopped over with the rain, unfortunately. Um, and you're gonna see the uh, red solo cups and other uh, pots that I have there of sunflowers that are yet to be put in the ground. So behind me here is my uh, really kind of junky compost area. I'm in the process of creating new compost bins. My goal of this project was to use kind of the spare lumber that I had around the property and make use of that. And it's amazing how much of it got used up with just one bin here. But uh, yeah, let me show you what I'm up to over here. So as we walk back this way, what you're going to see on both sides are the uh, blackberry, uh, the blackberry patch that I have there, and then on the other side is the garden side of the curbside bed that I was showing you from the other side to begin with. And in this bed, aside from the blackberries on one side, we've also got artichoke, but in this bed we've got big stand of Shasta daisies. Now those Shasta daisies didn't really flower for me last year, but they've just grown really big this year. And it looks like we're just finally getting blooms on them. So I've been waiting for that. One of the viewers helped me identify kind of these uh, light purple flowers as sweet rocket. And when I look in the, when I look it up on uh, Google and compare it, sure enough looks almost exactly the same to me so i think that's what it is but the odd thing is i don't remember planting it <laughs> but in any case that's been a beautiful backdrop in the garden there and then of course you also have some more of the fox gloves there and the other thing there's another plant in here that hasn't bloomed yet that i don't know what it is so maybe somebody can help me out with that one as well if you know what it is put that down in the comments so what i'm going to show you back here is my patch where we typically put pumpkins it's where the peas are now uh, but it's just been this big pat. The whole thing was covered with weeds. Uh, we got a lot of it weeded, but it's taken a lot of time. Um, and you can see where, where we've stopped the weeding for the day and we're gonna pick it up tomorrow. So behind me here, um, what you'll see as we're walking through this way is on one side, you'll see a lot of garlic. Um, and as a reminder, that garlic would be planted in September, October of last year. I'm expecting it'd be harvested in a month from now. Well, maybe a month and a half from now, really. Um, and then um, on the on the other side, uh, well, in that bed as well as the other side, there's a combination of uh, some broccoli, some uh, kale, some beets and chard from the prior year. So they're growing really tall, and they're they're now kind of uh, should be just pulled out at this point. But I've let them. I've let them grow up that way and I'll, I'll harvest some of that today, I think. So this um, bed that I have here along the hedge, it's one of my oldest flower beds for me in terms of probably one of the first ones I started to work and try to plant flowers in. And um, uh, you'll see that it has like that dusty miller. We had it as more of a unified hedge along the front previously, but I think we got over uh, vigorous with the weeding and the cleaning this bed up recently. And so now it's kind of spotty along there. But uh, what you also see in the bed back there is echinacea that hasn't flowered yet, but you see that's the leaves and stuff leafing out is what you see there is some echinacea. Um, there's a, a couple of lupines haven't flowered. Um, and there is uh, a bunch of new stuff in there that um, that we hope will kind of take over this next season some carnations um there is a new there's an annual in there that i hope will kind of really grow up and and be something special this year it's called uh nic nicotiania nicotinia um it's related to the tobacco plant and so we're seeing how that goes um so that's some of the some of what we've got in this in this row here 
So behind me here, I call this the fruit tree corridor. These fruit trees have been in place for uh, about four years now. And um, we have gotten a light amount of fruit last year. Uh, as I look here, I don't see any, I don't see much fruit set. And I think what happened was that they blossomed early when we had early, we had some, er, you know, our faux summer, our faux spring actually, I should say, in uh, early, late February, early March, I think we got a bunch of blossoms. And then we had a pretty late uh, snow here, late freeze and late snow for us here. And I think it killed a lot of the blossoms. So I think I lost a bunch of the fruit that way. I do see some pears on here and perhaps some apples. Um, but I'm not seeing kind of all the trees loaded up the way I would I would normally expect here. Um, along the base of the trees, uh, I've created flower beds. Uh, previously, that was just grass. We didn't have anything along the base of the trees. And what we've planted in those flower beds this year are the sweet peas. So hopefully those will kind of grow up here and we'll see some nice sweet pea flowers and vines uh, at some point here. And then there's room to put in some more flowers along the base there. Well, back in this area here is what I call the central garden. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you may know that I put a fence around this uh, this year to try to keep the rabbits out. It seems to be successful. I didn't like bury the bottom of the fence, so something could snuggle its way under. I also didn't close uh, the two areas where I would put gates and I didn't finish putting gates. But I think, as I've kind of said in other videos, I think I have particularly lazy rabbits around here because I think that alone has just discouraged them from coming in. And I haven't seen any activity in there that suggests that the rabbits are chomping at the top of my starts this year like they were last year. So that's worked so far. Uh, what you see in the beds here are, you see uh, just a bunch of everything. We've got garlic here uh, on the front part of it. And as we move this way, you're seeing a lot of brassica plants. There's some a lot of baby brassicas in there. So there's a lot of kale, broccoli, um, and cabbages that are planted throughout there. You also see kind of the, the planters, the pots, the, and the red solo cups uh, that are uh, what's in those are the hot weather uh, plants that are yet to be actually put in the bed themselves. They're, they're put there as placeholders to kind of see the spacing and whether that's where I want to keep them. So uh, in those <clears throat> containers are things like tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and squashes. Um, and so, yeah, we've got a, we got a lot going on in this, in this uh, part of the garden. So behind me here, what I'm showing you is kind of the, the faux whiskey barrels. These are actually resin planters. And they're one of kind of the main uh, flower areas that I have. I've planted a grass, a very kind of sharp, straight grass as kind of the centerpiece of most of these. And, we, and then we plant flowers around them. The one on the very end here, as we start heading this way, actually has uh, Chinese lanterns in it, which has turned out to be perennial for me in that pot. So it just keeps coming back every year and I haven't had to replant it. And it makes the timing is perfect. So I expect that we'll get some Chinese lanterns by mm, September-ish, which then it can be harvested and dried and used in kind of flower decorations or for from a florist uh, application. So at this point, what we're doing in these barrels, what you actually see in these barrels is just that they've been cleaned up. We've cleaned up the tulips out of them. You've seen, probably saw tulips in, in these planters before. The tulips have been cleaned out. They've been, they've been replanted with some new flowers that hopefully will give us uh, a show next uh, couple of months here. So behind me here in the main beds, um, as I take you along here, uh, I've got just about everything going on, right? At this point, June, I'm putting anything and everything I can in here for the season. I have fava beans that have been here for a while now and they hopefully will be ready to harvest in the next month. But then I've got, uh, I've also got um, some garlic that was kind of hidden that I didn't know that I lost basically in the garden. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of garlic that I lost last year that just stayed in the beds. And then you see kind of, that's where you see these multi sprouts coming up. Those are, those are garlic that just stayed in for an extra year and so i'm just letting them go to see see what happens with it really um but then what's new what's been planted out in here uh we've got everything cabbage you know all the brassicas cabbages broccoli um kale cauliflower uh i've got carrots out there i've got um i got a little bit of strawberries i haven't been super successful with that yet i've got uh and then I've got the hot weather things in the in the cups again and in the in the pots ready to go in. Tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, squash, both summer and winter squash. Uh, you name it, we've got it out here in some fashion. Um, and I know, you know, the way the way I roll on this, 
not all of it's going to be successful. Some of it will be great. There'll be a bunch of failures and I'll uh, show you what's happening on that front along the way. So this uh, row of raspberries here, um, it's a it's a great benefit to have. It's something that was with the property when I came. Yeah, I enjoy it. We've got friends who enjoy it, come over and pick raspberries because you know there's always more than we can possibly have there. And right now, um, as you'll see, it's just a it's just a a uh, a lot of bee activity. It's a great thing for the bees uh, at this moment. It's a great thing for them. And then they're doing a service for us and pollinating these berries and getting them ready for us. Well, back here in the greenhouse, you know, I'm starting to clear it out. Technically, everything could be out now. Um, it should be out now. I'm not going to have enough room for everything, so I have a lot of backups here. Um, and what I still have in the greenhouse are things like eggplants, peppers, um, some marigolds. Uh, I've got uh, some zinnias in there, some melons. And uh, some of that stuff, like the eggplants and the peppers, I'm going to pot up into bigger pots and I'm going to go ahead and maybe keep in the greenhouse temporarily. And then I'll just grow them in the pots the entire season because I've got so many. I'm going to put some in the beds and I'm going to put some in pots. And so I'm going to grow a bunch in, po in pots because I've got so many. Uh, for the entire season, I'll grow them in pots and I'll start them in the greenhouse until it gets way too hot. And then I'll move them out during the hottest part of the summer and then move them back in maybe in the fall. Um, and I don't know exactly. I mean, I'd love to do the same thing with the melons, but the melons are going to be in big pots and they take up a lot of space. And so I don't know that I can move them in and out very easily, but but we'll see where I go with that. Can you feel it? The garden is about to explode out here. We have beautiful sunny days finally here. The red solo cups behind me in the beds, that's the tomatoes being set out and spaced out. And then I'll come along and dig the holes and put them in. So more on that, uh, more on that later. But I just, I just had to share my excitement that, you know, the gar this garden is about to burst.